So hi everyone, today I'll be discussing how we can use soil bacteria to um, combat growing antibiotic resistance. Um, antibiotic resistance is the process by which infectious bacteria become resistant to the drugs we rely on to treat them. The World Health Organization has recently designated antibiotic resistance as one of the greatest threats to human health today. Although most bacteria are harmless and many actually benefit us, we use antibiotics against the species of bacteria that do cause us harm. Um, uh, antibiotics are compounds which can either kill bacteria or stop them from multiplying. Since the development of penicillin for public use in the 1940s, um, antibiotics have saved millions of lives and they continue to do so to the present day. There is no single cause of antibiotic resistance. Um, taking antibiotics when they aren't required, such as to treat a viral infection like the flu, has been shown to uh, speed up the emergence of drug-resistant bacteria. Intensive farming practices where livestock are given antibiotics when they're healthy to protect them from infections also increases resistance. As antibiotic resistance increases, the number of drugs with which we can successfully treat bacterial infections decreases. This means that in the future, um, even the simplest of infections may have potentially life-threatening consequences. So here are some examples of bacteria um, against which uh, there are developing resistance against the drugs used to treat them. So far, we've talked about what antibiotic resistance is and what causes it. Let's now look at how it actually arises. At the start of an infection, a small number of bacteria will enter the host and um, these bacteria will then multiply inside the host, which could be a human or an animal. Um, and bacteria multiply so rapidly that they have a very high rate of mutation. While these mutations tend to be random, it's possible that mutations in a small number of the bacteria will allow them to resist the effects of a particular antibiotic here. <laughs> When the uh, host organism is given an antibiotic to treat their infection, the bacteria without the mutation die, whereas the bacteria that do have the mutation are able to ignore the effects of the antibiotic and survive. These drug-resistant bacteria can then multiply inside the host and cause the host to relapse and become ill again. When treated with the same antibiotic as before, um, the, it has no effect on the bacteria the host remains ill and may even spread these drug-resistant bacteria to other people. Now, many infectious bacteria already have a limited range of antibiotics that are effective against them, and antibiotic resistance is reducing this range every day. An important part of the fight against antibiotic resistance is the discovery of new antibiotics against which no resistance currently exists. So where can we find new antibiotics? Um, to date, the most effective antibiotics have been isolated from bacteria that live in soil. This is because soil is home to a wide variety of different types of bacteria, and some of these bacteria will be competing against each other to obtain particular nutrients. A large proportion of them have therefore evolved to produce antibiotic compounds, which they can use to kill their competitors and win the battle for these nutrients. Um, uh, that, that's what makes soil such a good source of new antibiotics with which no resistance currently exists. Although there is one problem uh, facing research into soil bacteria which produce new antibiotics, and this is that most are extraordinarily picky or fastidious about the nutrients they need to survive. This means that while these bacteria thrive in soil, they are, are, they are unable to be grown or cultured in the artificial nutrients provided in a lab. It's been estimated that 99.5 to 99% of all soil bacteria cannot be cultured in a lab. We need to find a way of culturing these bacteria in order to um, research new antibiotics with which we can combat antimicrobial resistance. So one method of doing this is to grow soil bacteria in their natural environment instead of in the lab. Whereas with standard culturing techniques, we saw that 99.9 to 99, 99.5 to 99.9% of all bacteria cannot be cultured. 
When an eye chip is used, we can culture up to 50% of all soil bacteria, which is a massive increase. Here's what an eye chip looks like. Now I'm going to go on to talk about what it is and how it's used. The eye chip or isolation chip is a small device made up of three plastic components. When the middle component is loaded up with soil bacteria mixed with agar, thin membranes are placed on either side of it, as shown here, and um, the, the eye chip can then be fully assembled. Uh, when the eye chip is then buried in soil, these membranes prevent other soil microbes from getting into the eye chip and contaminating the experiment, but do allow nutrients to pass through to the bacteria growing within. Eye chips can actually be buried anywhere in soil. Mine were actually buried in my supervisor's back garden. Um, and uh, after around three weeks, the eye chip can be dug back up and the bacteria inside can be uh, removed and plated out onto agar so that we can test them for any useful antibiotics. You can see that when we use standard culturing techniques, where bacteria are taken from soil and are plated out onto artificial nutrients in a lab, this results in colonies that are mostly cream coloured or white and have a mucosal texture, which is a fancy way of saying they kind of look like bogies. In contrast to this, Colonies of bacteria that have been recovered using an eye chip tend to show a much wider variety in appearance. Another way of putting this is they look weirder. There are technologies that would allow you to quantify this difference, but unfortunately I didn't have access to that during my research project. We would expect a result like this as only a few types of soil bacteria can be grown on the artificial nutrients given in a lab. Whereas with an eye chip, we can recover a much wider range of soil bacteria, many of which having never been grown before. So at this stage, we have a, we've cultured um, some soil bacteria and we want to test whether they produce any useful antibiotics. So we can create overlays with a harmful bacteria of our choice. The research group I was working with focused on a species called Clostridioides difficile, better known as C. diff, which is a species of bacteria that tends to infect people in hospitals and can cause life-threatening inflammation. We can create overlays by mixing harmful bacteria with molten agar and then pouring this on top of an agar plate that already contains the bacteria we've isolated from soil. So in this way, the harmful bacteria will be growing on top of the soil bacteria. If no useful antibiotics are produced, then the harmful bacteria will be able to grow over the whole plate. And in such a case, you'd see that there's a cloudy layer covering, covering the entire agar plate. However, if any useful antibiotics are produced, the harmful bacteria won't be able to grow on the area surrounding that bacteria. Um, I wasn't able to isolate any new antibiotics against C. diff, unfortunately, but I was able to produce an example of an overlay plate by growing C. diff on top of a bacteria in the Bacillus family. As a known antibiotic producer, you can see that the Bacillus species is producing an antibiotic which is effective against C. diff, as indicated by the presence of a clear zone around the Bacillus species. So at this stage, we have a species of bacteria that was cultured using an eye chip, which we know is producing an antibiotic that's useful against a harmful bacteria. So what's next? Well, the antibiotic compound from the soil bacteria must be isolated and then it can be identified. Um, after this, the, um, if the antibiotic hasn't been previously discovered, we can um, research into its structure and mechanism of action. Um, after that, clinical trials can begin and if these are successful, the antibiotic compound can be produced on an industrial scale. So in conclusion, with the eye chip, we can grow soil bacteria that's never been grown before. We have seen that this is much better than standard culturing techniques. Um, these antibiotics grown using eye chips are likely to produce, um, these soil bacteria grown using eye chips are likely to produce antibiotics against which no resistance currently exists. And these antibiotics should be able to help us and the fight against the current antibiotic resistance crisis. So thank you for listening and I'll be happy to take any questions that you have. Thank you very much. What's agar? 
it's, um, it's basically a type of jelly that we mix. It, it's made, it comes in a powder uh -huh. and you mix it with water at a high temperature and it forms this liquid. You can pour it into a Petri dish mm -hmm. and it solidifies and it's useful for growing different types of bacteria on. Um, the kind of key point is that you can change the type of nutrients you put in the agar mm -hmm. um, and that can affect what type of bacteria you're able to grow on it. Mm -hmm. But one issue with soil bacteria is that no matter what nutrients you give them, it's still not enough. They're too picky. Staph so what like, procedures did the researcher did you take to not get sick? Oh, yeah. Um, so C. diff is a category 2 pathogen, which means that it's not harmless, but if you do get infected with it, um, it's not, you're not going to die. Um, you should be able to recover, but it's not the ideal scenario to be in, I'm sure you can understand. Um, but there's a lot of... Um, it requires a lot more attention and care when you're working with it in the laboratory. It's not like you have to wear a full hazmat suit all the time, yeah. but everything does have to be disinfected. You have to be washing your hands all of the time. Um, it's kept in a sterile environment most of the time. Did you use less strains or was it just, is it just one strain? Uh, no, I, I used one strain yeah. for most of my experiment, but there were some cases where I used a bunch of different strains, but um, it was, wild type C. diff, so if I did breathe in any spores then I would have got life-threatening inflammation or, you know. Um, I'm not sure if you know the answer to this, but um, you were mentioning that the, like, the antibiotic bacteria are producing things when they live in the soil. Yeah. Do you know if he's, like, looked into if there was any crossover for um, grazing farm animals, if there was some sort of passive absorption of um, like the antibiotics? I have no idea, yeah. Um, do you mean in terms of like they're eating these soil bacteria, so... Right. Like if they're just like grazing and they just like naturally eat soil, if there was some sort of absorption of antibiotics that way? Um, yeah, I'm not sure really. Yeah, I've not looked into that. Just to answer that, I think that in this case it might be because and well, in the soil, many of the bacteria produce antibiotics only in their own vicinity. Yeah. So there would be little chance of any of the antibiotic getting onto grass, which would be fed to cattle. Yes. And even if they would be in such a small quantity, that's not should really happen. Yeah, it's they're not ready. Like we can't take bacteria from soil and then use them straight away. There has to be this industrial manufacture first of the compounds. And that's where, that's the difference between penicillin that's growing on a plate in a lab and penicillin that's a pill or an injection that you can take. Yeah. yeah and there's one last thing that I wanted to ask if there's some fun. Uh, <laughs> you said that it took three weeks to culture the, uh, to get enough bacteria in the IJ. Uh, what yeah. did you do in those three weeks? <laughs> <laughs> What did I do in those three weeks? Um, yeah, that's, that's definitely what I did. There were no, no breaks or anything like that, you know. Um, I did have a lot of stuff that I could be doing in the meantime. Um, you saw the overlay plate I made where I took bacteria that were known to produce antibiotics to make an example, and that did take some time. Um, same as with the plates of the standard culturing techniques, I did have to do a lot of those plates as well and diluting them and stuff like that. So that took a lot of time while I was waiting for the eye check. Can we say thank you one last time to Jack?